Okay, students, we made it to your last portal. This particular portal is called NetLab. It's an NDG product, and we use it all the time to help students learn how to do the networking part of this particular course. This is where your labs will be. Now, you know you got labs and you got packet tracers. We just doing labs in here. As you see, you got netlabve.oten.edu. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. And I'm just going to show you a few things that's important to you. Now, this may be a little longer than the rest of them, but still, it's very important. So now we are in NetLabs. A couple of things I want to show you is when you in here, you be coming as a student. So all you will see when you click on this box right here, new lab reservation, you will just see schedule lab for myself. As a professor, I have more options, but that's all you will see. Now, when you want to schedule a lab, you just go ahead and click on right here, clicking in. Once I click on my particular course, and you will see your course represented as this right here, you have two options in here. Now, I always put in what I call the skills assessment, because that's a major assessment that you will be utilizing in this course. And the reason I put it in there is for you to go in there and just have fun learning as much as you can about that skills assessment. Because at the end of the course, you will have to do this and get the very best grade you can. So practice, practice, practice. But your labs are here. This is where you will go get your lab. Cisco Cyber Ops Associate V1. That's where all your labs are located. You click on that and you will see a plethora of labs in here that you can use. All you have to do to schedule a lab for yourself it's just to go ahead and click on one and there you go as you can see people reserve labs in here now i will click there but i know i'm not going to get in here because it's too late so even though i click there it will give me some time 35 minutes but it's really late so i'm gonna go ahead and click on this and then click here and this is how it will look when you schedule a lab Okay, all you have to do now is to go ahead and click Enter Lab. Once you click Enter Lab, give it a few minutes. Get you a cup of coffee or something to drink. Just make sure it's not alcohol because you're going to need all your faculties, <laughs> your skills in this. And then you are here. So that's how simple it is to go in here. Now, I'm going to break right here because on the next section, I'm going to show you everything that you need to do in here. So when you're working in net labs, what's important is that you always pay attention to these four boxes up here at the top. As you can see, you got technology, content, status, and when client. Now, this may change from time to time because it may be other computers that it connects you to. Okay, so when you click technology, you can see it shows you a topology of your particular computer. So just make sure that you know what your topology looks like. The next thing is content. Content is where you will do all of your work. Now, what I tell students to do is to make sure that they download this file here to their desktop and turn it into a Word doc. What do I mean by that? So I'm gonna come here and download this folder. As you can see, it downloads pretty quick, and I'm choosing my desktop, right? Because that's where I want the folder to go. I know exactly what a folder is. It's on my desktop, and it just proceeded to open up. But I don't need it open because I'm going to turn it into a Word doc. So I'm going to go ahead and close this particular folder because I want to turn it into a Word doc. So, bow, it's closed. When I close that, I'm going to come over here to Status to make sure everything is up. Always check your status because that lets you know that everything is functioning exactly the way it should. Once it says powered on, you're good. 
And the last thing I'm gonna click on is of course this here. Now this allows you to go into the particular computer that you will work on. These are virtual computers and by them being virtual computers, that means you connect it to a vast systems uh, what we call SOC system. SOC means a security system, system or a database uh, department, et cetera, et cetera. You know what SOC means. Okay, so I'm going to come here and click. I'm going to come here and click on this here. So once you click on that, this little arrow right here, once you click on this little arrow right here, you're going to click Control Alt Delete. Now, the problem with Control Alt Delete, when people read this, they normally hit the keys on their keyboard. Do not do that. Always do it from here. Because if you do it on your keyboard, you're going to shut your computer down. So let's go ahead and click here. Okay, now, the password will always be in these Cisco labs. It will be C as in Charlie, Y as in Wyoming. Wyoming is not spelled with a Y. It's spelled with a W, but let's put Y. B as in boy, E as in Elwood, R as in run. O as in Oscar, P as in Paul, and S as in your professor, Sistrong. Okay, let's hit enter. So that will give you access to it. So the password will always be cyber ops. Okay, and you don't have to worry about people learning that password because guess what? This is in a virtual environment. It is contained and you will not have problems. Now, I have the window open where I will be doing the work. Woohoo! That's magnificent. So, now what I need to do is go get that file. So, I remember I put that file on my desktop. So, I'm going to go down to my desktop. Now, I'm working with two screens. So, you won't see my desktop. But, I'm going to open up Microsoft Word. And why am I opening up work Microsoft Word? Because I want to turn that file into a word doc which i can work in okay so as you can see here is microsoft word right here so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take that document that i download and put it right in the center right here in microsoft word it's not microsoft word is not completely open i'm at the start of microsoft word and i'm putting that document right here once I do that, it gives me a box that I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then that document will proceed to open into a Word doc. That's how you change PDFs into Word docs in Microsoft Word. Now, why did I do this? Because I can come in Word now and click anywhere and start typing information. Because this document is what I want to give back to my professor to show that I'm doing the work in there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this document and slide it to the side and have these line up side by side. Perfecto. This here is a document that I'm gonna give back to my professor. This here is where I will be working from. Now, I'm gonna do a few things in here to get us running and up and going so the first thing i'm gonna do is this of course i'm gonna read all the information but i know that i have already completed this information because i put the administrator uh login in the password really all i had to do was put the password in and now i'm at this particular section right here it says navigate to the toolbox here's the toolbox I'm going to double click on that and open that up. Now remember, this is just a simple demonstration right quick of how you should be working inside of this particular portal. And I call it portal because you'll be working with multiple portals and this is just the NDG NetLabs portal. The next thing I'm going to go is look for this particular folder right here and that folder is right there. So I'm going to double click on it. And there you go. Now, try not to open up other things like I did when I double clicked it. It opened up other stuff. Try not to do that. 
follow the instructions. The instructions is going to teach you how to do this work that we do in the IT industry. And if you follow the instructions, you will be okay. So now I'm going to uh, locate and double click on TCP view EXE. So normally if it's in alphabetical order, you know it's at the very bottom because it's a T, right? So you want to go down here to the T's and you want to click on the file right there, TCP view EXE. Just double click on it when you get there. And a particular box will pop open. Once that box pop open, it is magnificent. Go ahead and click agree so we can get in there. And we're now in there. So as you can see, I followed the instructions. I'm going to go down and I clicked on this here, TCP view. And then I followed the instructions. It says, uh, it says right here, exit the file explorer application leave the tc view application open now i am going to leave mine open even though it tells me to close this box right here i'm gonna leave it open for the fun of it you can go ahead and close it and you can go ahead and leave it open but i know you're gonna say professor professor why did you uh leave that open uh you said follow the rules well don't worry about it because we actually going to come back to it. That's why I, I, I'm leaving mine open. I don't want to do the extra work. Okay. So now I'm going to look for a particular file in here. It says uh, part two, explore the running processes. Now let me explain processes to you. When you turn your computer on, in the background, there are a lot of processes that are running without you even knowing this to keep your system up and going. We're going to explore some of these processes and learn a little bit about them. So the first processor that I'm going to go to is this one here. As you can see, double click isass.exe. And of course, it's in alphabetical order, so I'm going to go ahead and click it and open it up. Now, if it has multiple processes in there with that name, make sure you choose the one that says TCP, not TCP V6 or anything else. Just make sure it's TCP. So I'm going to double click and click that open. As you can see, it open up, right? Now, it asks me a question that you will answer, and I'm not going to give you an answer to it. What is the ISASS.exe? In your folder, it says, what is this? In what folder is it located? Now, you have to choose the information from here. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to let you tell me. And then I'm going to close this here. Click OK to close it. OK, so we just did that part right there. Let us move on. Now, it gives you more instructions. View the properties for the other running processes, so you can go look around. So for example, double click on the system processor. So if some of these processes that you will click on, you won't be able to see their particular information because in these processors, you will learn that some of them give you information and some of them have security set up on them. So you will not be able to get the information. And if I went through in here, look for a system processor like this right here and double clicked it, it's going to say, no, 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 that's a system processor. And what a system process processor can do, it can shut your system down if you change it or modify it. Okay. So I'm going to stop right here because I just wanted to give you a brief synopsis of how to work in here. But one of the things that's important that I want you to know, and I'm going to blow this up. No, I'm going to leave it like it is. Uh, for instance, as you travel through here, I'm going to want you to get screenshots to show me you're doing the work. So remember, I was here and I, I opened up this document to show your professor that you did the work. I would take a screenshot of that. How do I take my screenshots? I come right back this, to this arrow here come down to snapshot, click it, and now I got a snapshot of that, and I can click submit. I can put notes in here, 
to let my professor know what the snapshot is and I can click submit. And if you wanted to be one of them students that had total control over your work because you want to keep these documents for yourself, you can come get another snapshot of it by clicking on a tool on my computer that I use. Snipping is a tool where I can actually take snapshots and put them, embed them in a document. So watch how I do this. I'm going to go new. I'm going to take a picture of that. And then I'm going to save it as, let's just give a real quick save as one, right? I'm going to put one right there. And I'm going to put that on my desktop so I can bring it back up. And I save it, right? Now I can close this folder here. But I want to show my professor that I did the work. So I'm going to come in here where that document should have been placed, which would have been possibly right here. After I put my comment in, I can come right here and just drop that document in. I know you're going to put it in order, but I'm just going to put it right there. And in Word, I can go up here to Insert. Now watch this. I can go to Insert in Word. I'm going to pull it over here. I'm going to go to Insert. I'm going to go to Picture. And I'm going to drop that document right into my Word document. I'm going to say Insert. And there it is. So now there's no doubt that I did the work. The professor will see it when he opened it up. Now, why would you do that when the professor can see it anyway? Because you want to keep documentation of everything you do. Once the class is over, it's over. You won't be able to go back into NetLabs. But this is your record for you. Now, you can size it up and make it look pretty and all that. I'm not going to do that. But this is for you. Keep records of everything you do in here so you'll be always be able to re uh, go back and refer to it. I'm going to go ahead and click Submit. Now, in the background, I have it. But for you, you also have it in a document you will keep. You're going to create a folder on your desktop and you're going to put all your labs and packet traces in those folders so you can keep them. Okay, with that being said, this is Professor Sistrom and I just want to do a brief synopsis that my professor will get all the information that they need.